മോർണിംഗ് ടു ഓൾ ഈ ലോക്ക്ഡൗൺ കാലത്ത് അഡ്വാൻസ് ടോപ്പോളജി നിങ്ങൾ പഠിക്കുന്നുവെന്ന് ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു അഡ്വാൻസ് ടോപ്പോളജിയിൽ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട കാര്യമാണ് ഡെഫിനേഷൻസ് നമുക്ക് ഡെഫിനേഷൻസ് എല്ലാം നല്ല ബൈഹാർട്ടായിരിക്കണം എങ്കിൽ മാത്രമേ നമ്മുടെ റിസൾട്ടുകളും തിയറംസും ഒക്കെ നമ്മൾ പഠിക്കാൻ സാധിക്കൂ അപ്പോൾ ഇന്നത്തെ ഈ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ നമ്മളൊന്ന് ഡെഫിനേഷൻസ് ഒക്കെ ഒന്ന് റീകളക്ട് ചെയ്യാം വളരെ നിസ്സാരമാണെന്ന് തോന്നുമെങ്കിലും അതിൻ്റെ കൃത്യമായുള്ള അർത്ഥത്തിൽ നമ്മളതിനെ എടുക്കണം സെപ്പറേഷൻ ആക്സിയംസ് നമ്മൾ പഠിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ടി നോട്ട് ടി വൺ ടി ടു ടി ത്രീ ആൻഡ് ടി ഫോർ ആ സെപ്പറേഷൻ ആക്സിയംസ് അതുപോലെ സ്പേസസ് ടി നോട്ട് സ്പേസ് ടി വൺ ടി ടു ടി ത്രീ ആൻഡ് ടി ഫോർ സ്പേസസ് ഒരു സ്പേസ് കൂടി ഉണ്ട് ടി ഫൈവ് സ്പേസ് കൂടി അത് നമ്മൾ പഠിക്കും ഇപ്പോൾ ടി നോട്ട് സ്പേസ് എന്താണെന്ന് ഒന്ന് നോക്കാം A topological space exists to satisfy the T0 axiom or is said to be a T0 space if given any two distinct points in X, there exists an open set which contains one of them but not the other. You have to learn that. I am not going to say that. Two distinct points are called one point or one open set contains. So, what is T0 space? If we look at that, we can see what T0 space is. അപ്പോൾ ഞാനിവിടെ ഒന്ന് പറയാൻ സാധിക്കുന്നത് ഇഫ് എ സ്പേസ് എക്സ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ടി നോട്ട് ദൻ ദർ വുഡ് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ടു ഡിസ്റ്റിൻ പോയിൻസ് എക്സ് വൈ നെക്സ് സച്ച് ദാറ്റ് എവരി ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റ് ഇൻ നെക്സ് ഐദർ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ബോത്ത് എക്സ് ആൻഡ് വൈ ഓർ എൽസ് കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് നൈദർ ഓഫ് ദം അപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെയും നമ്മൾ ടി നോട്ട് എല്ലാ സ്പേസിലും നമ്മൾ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിൻ്റെ ഡിസ്റ്റിൻ പോയിൻസിൻ്റെ കാര്യം പറയുന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മളൊന്ന് എടുക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ സോ സപ്പോസ് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ സ്പേസ് എക്സ് then to take two distinct points x y രണ്ട് ഡിസ്റ്റിൻ്റ് പോയിൻ്റ്സ് അപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ ഇത് അപ്പോൾ ഏത് ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റ് എടുത്താലും ഈ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിനെയും കണ്ടെയിൻ ചെയ്യണം അതാണ് ഒരു കേസ് സേ യു വി എക്സെട്ര ഏത് ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റ് എടുത്താലും ഈ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിനെയും കണ്ടെയിൻ ചെയ്യും രണ്ടാമത്തെ കേസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിനെയും കണ്ടെയിൻ ചെയ്യാത്ത ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റുകൾ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിനെയും കണ്ടെയിൻ ചെയ്യാത്ത ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റുകൾ ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റ് മാത്രമേ ഓപ്പൺ സബ്സെറ്റ് മാത്രമേ എക്സിനുള്ളൂ എക്സിനുള്ള രണ്ട് ഓപ്പൺ ടൈപ്പ് ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റുകൾ ഒന്ന് ഈ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിനെയും കണ്ടെയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റുകൾ രണ്ടാമത്തേത് ഈ രണ്ട് പോയിൻസിനെയും കണ്ടെയിൻ ചെയ്യാത്ത ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റുകൾ അങ്ങനെയാണെങ്കിൽ ദ സ്പേസ് എക്സീസ് സെറ്റ് ടു ബി ഈസ് നോട്ട് എ ടി നോട്ട് സ്പേസ് ടി നോട്ട് സ്പേസ് അല്ല അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ വരുമ്പോൾ ടി നോട്ട് സ്പേസ് എന്താണെന്ന് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് മനസ്സിലാവും ഇതിൻ്റെ ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കിയാൽ മതി അപ്പോൾ ഇതിനകത്ത് പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട ഒരു കാര്യം ഇപ്പം പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് വൈവേകൊക്കെ ചോദിക്കുന്നതാണ് ഗീ മീ ദ ഡെഫിനേഷൻ ഓഫ് എ ടി നോട്ട് സ്പേസ് അതെല്ലാവരും പറയും അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ചോദിക്കും ടി നോട്ട് അല്ലാത്ത സ്പേസിൻ്റെ പ്രത്യേകത എന്താ അപ്പോൾ വി ആർ ടേക്കിംഗ് ടു ഡിസ്റ്റിങ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് എക്സ് ആൻഡ് വൈ ദൻ ഇഫ് എവരി ഓപ്പൺ സെറ്റ് കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ബോത്ത് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് എക്സ് ആൻഡ് വൈ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ Another type of open sets contains neither x and y. Then we say that x is not a T0 space. So that is the definition of or the concept of a space which is not T0. Then we come to the T1 axiom. T1 axiom a space x is said to be said to satisfy T1 axiom or is said to be a T1 space if for every distinct points x, y, x. There exists an open set containing x but not y and another open set containing y but not x. We have a definition. Very simple definition. We will go to T2 space. Because if we explain T2 space, we will go to T0. A space exists set to be a T0 space if for every distinct point x, y, 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 There exists disjoint open sets U in X such that X belongs to U and Y belongs to V. But then we can compare this both T1 and T2. This is T1 and T2. See X, Y, two distinct points. Here also X, Y, two distinct points. This is the concept of T1 space. And this is the concept of T2 space. See the difference between this. If for every... Uh, distinct points x y there exists two dis two open sets u and v such that x belongs to u and y belongs to v here also 
see that the difference is u and v are disjoint in t2 in the case of t2 here also here also uh, example for t0 t1 t2 are we know the metric spaces all metric spaces are t0 t1 and t2 so this is the concept of t2 axiom now we come to regular space uh, see that uh, we, we are defining regular space regular at a point see the concept of regular space regular at a point so a very simple one we know the definition see that uh, we have to take a point concentrate a point x and we have to take a closed set not containing x any closed set not containing x if suppose that there x is not closed set containing s we cannot uh, move forward so take a point and a closed set not containing x then if we can find two open sets like this u and v we say that the space is in the uh, space is regular at the point x that is the concept the space is regular at the point x now vary the point x I take another point say y here then we take another closed set d then here also two open sets containing the point y and the closed set to c so closed set to d here we say that the space is regular at y now we come to a regular space. A regular space means if the space is regular at each and every point of the space, we say that the space is regular. So that is the concept of regular space. Now we come to the uh, normal space, we compare the regularity and normality, the two properties. So in order to find or define the normal space, we have to take two close to sets, disjoint close to sets C and D. And if there exist two open sets, disjoint open sets U and V, we say that the space is normal. There is no question of normal at a point here. Here, at the same time, regularity, the, po the space is regular at a point. But in the case of uh, normality, here is regular and normal. There is no question of normal at a point. The space is regular. See that the condition is that if we take any two distinct closed or disjoint closed subsets C and D, any two disjoint closed subsets C and D, there exists two disjoint open sets U and V such that <coughs> U contains C and V contains D. That is the concept of normal space. Now we come to the T3 axiom. T3, we know that we know regular space in addition to that if it is t1 we say that regular plus t1 it is called a t3 so t3 means regular plus t1 t3 regular plus t1 and t4 is normal plus t1 we know all this all these concepts are very simple one now we come to the concept of completely regular space. Completely regular space. A space X is said to be completely regular. If for any two po any point X belongs to X and a, a close to set C not containing X, there exists a continuous function F from X to 0, 1, closed in the 0, 1, such that F of X equal to 0 and F of Y equal to 1 for all Y belongs to C. Let us see the construction of the complete regular space completely regular space see that this is the space x and we are drawing this r set of real numbers and a point x and a close to set to c and see the function f here is the point 0 and here is the point 1 See the f f of x f of x equal to zero, and see this is y, then f of y equal to one, f of y equal to one. Y is taken from C, the close to set to C. Uh, if we can find a function, 
if we can find a continuous function f from x to 0, 1, such that f of x equal to 0 and f of y equal to 1, we say that the space x is completely regular. The space x is completely regular. See the condition is completely regular if for any point x belongs to x. So if we vary x, then also this condition, there exists a, another function, a continuous function satisfying this condition. It's only one point x. If we take another point, then also if there exists a function f and it satisfies all the points of the x. So this is the concept of complete regular space. And we come to the another concept of techno space. A space is said to be techno if it is completely regular on T1. We know what is completely regular space. In addition to that, we add a property that is T1. We say that the space is techno techno space. Now we come to the, uh, I think it's not familiar to you, T4, T5 space. T5 space. A completely normal and a T1 space is called a T5 space. A completely normal. Before that, what is mean by <coughs> completely normal space? A space is said to be completely normal if for every two mutually separated subsets C and D of which there exists open sets U and V such that C subset of U, D subset of V and U intersection V. So the closed sets, uh, in order to see that the, we have to compare the normal space and the completely normal space, a space is said to be completely normal if for every two mutually separated subsets. See the difference. So first we draw the concept of normal space. Normal space, so we take a two close to set C and D. See the concepts. Now completely normal space. See that uh, the concept is like this. See that here C and D are closed, dis disjoint closed sets. <coughs> but here E and F are mutually separated sets. You know what is mutually separated? The condition is that E intersection F bar equal to 5 and E bar intersection F is equal to 5. We say that these sets E and F are mutually separated. They are mutually separated. See the difference between the disjoint and mutually separated sets. If we can find two open sets Y and Z containing E and F, they are, see that uh, these Y and Z are uh, dis disjoint. And uh, containing E and F, we say that the space is completely normal space, completely normal space. <coughs> now we come to the concept of, see the difference between, I think, we are familiar with this difference, normal and completely normal space. Now normal, in the normal space, E and D are closed sets. But in completely normal space, two sets, they are mutually separated. Mutually separated, we mean what is the meaning of mutually separated, here also given. Now next is T5 space, a completely normal and T1 space is called a T5 space. Completely normal plus T1, C. This is T completely normal. In addition to that, if it is T1, we say that it is a T5 space. T5 is a new concept of T5 space. <coughs> Maybe ask in the Viva House examination what is a T5 space. You can see the definition in the exercise. <coughs> Next is uniform convergence of a sequence of functions. Uniform convergence of sequence of functions. You know what is point based convergence, uniform convergence. First, we uh, define what is uniform convergence. For that, let us take, take a sequence of functions. Let x be a topological space and y d be a metric space. See the a concept. Uh, we are taking functions from x to y and x is only a topological space. And y is a metric space. So remember that y is the 
that the codomain is a metric space. Then a sequence of functions, sequence fn from x to y is set to converge uniformly on x to a function f from x to y. If for every epsilon is on 0, there exists n belongs to n. I think this definition is, you know, the definition. Uh, n belongs to n such that for all n greater than or equal to n and for all x belongs to x, d of fn x fx less than epsilon. So let me write the main condition of the, uh, the uniform convergence here. <coughs> See that uh, f is a function from x to y. So remember, f is a function from x to y, x uh, topological space and y metric space. Metric space, see the, see the difference. Then we are taking a function fn from x to y, fn from x to y. <coughs> this, see that, uh, this, this is the limit of the, fun, the sequence fn. And fn is again, we you know, it's a very simple one. This is a function from x to y. Fn's are functions from x to y. Now the condition is that <coughs> the sequence fn converges to f. <coughs> convert this to f. If the condition is for every epsilon d than 0, for every epsilon d than 0, there exists n belongs to n, set of natural numbers, such that <coughs> for all n greater than or equal to n, and for all x belongs to x, d of fn x, f of x less than epsilon, that is the concept. So remember that this is the condition d of fn x f of x less than epsilon so this d is the metric on the same metric on y d d of fn x f of x less than epsilon see the concept now let us uh, draw the the definition of the concept of the definition and uh, see that uh, this is our space x and this is the space y the matrix space y. Now take a point x here. Now see this is our f1 x and this is our f2 x. We know we have a fun the sequence of function fn. Now f2 x, f3 x, etc. f1 x, f2 x, f3 x, etc. The points in the code of mine. Then here is f of x. Here because f is a function fn is a function from x to y. Now see that uh, d, what is d here? d is a function from y cross y to r. Now here see that uh, we are taking y cross y, y cross y to r. See that uh, y cross y, r is here, set of real numbers, then y cross y, here is, uh, see that uh, uh, they are pairs of points, so like this, f1 x, f1 x, f of x, f2 x, f of x, like this, now they are images. D of fn x f of x less than epsilon. See that this is our epsilon. This is D of fn x f of x. D of fn x f of x. This is D of fn x f of x. D of f f2 x f of x, etc. They are less than epsilon. That is the condition. If this condition is satisfied, we say that the sequence fn converges to a uniform convergence, converges to f of x uniformly. Now next we come to the point-wise convergence. The sequence sequence f n x f n is set to converge point-wise to f. <coughs> if for every x belongs to x, the sequence sequence f n x converges to f of x in y. So in the case of point-wise convergence, <coughs> in the case of point-wise convergence, the condition is that the sequence f n x converges to f of x in y. Sequence fn x converges to f of x in y. See the, the two sets. One is x. 
the other y that is the codomain sequence fnx converges to f of x in y converges to f of x in y x so this is f of x this is f one x f two x etc f three x now here we have we can form a sequence that is sequence f n of x in in this in the space y sequence f n of x that is sequence f one x sequence f two x etc if it converges to f of x in y we say that the sequence of functions fn converges to f that is the condition the sequence uh, of functions fn converges to f so that is the point wise convergence now next uh, product topology see that uh, in product topology we have we already have definitions in the <coughs> in advanced topology and also in and the the first part also we we already know the definition of product topology and uh, let us consider the product topology using the uh, use, using the projection that is let uh, x, uh, the collection x i to y such that i belongs to i be an indexed collection of topological spaces and let x be the cartesian product then we get product i belongs to x i so x i to y x i to y the spaces so in product topology we have to take x i to y such that i belongs to i indexed family of topological spaces and x is equal to product i belongs to i x i the product space x is defined like this product i belongs to i x i we know how to take this because this is the cartesian product of spaces cartesian product of spaces and see that this i i is the index set and x i to y indexed family of spaces and see remember that an element of x is of the form a sequence a sequence now suppose that if there are a finite number of sets x on x to x attraction then we say that an element of x is uh, the product space is uh, an n-tuple that is n-tuple x on x to x attraction so do you see the difference now i can i um, and the, i know that uh, we we already have this definition then pi i the projection function we know what is pi i the projection function pi i from x to x i projection function pi i that is the product space to the function pi i from the product space x to the coordinate space x i that is the projection we already know what is a projection like this and the properties of the projection then the product topology on x is the smallest topology on x which makes each pi i continuous we know the smallest topology greatest topology like this and see the condition which makes pi i continuous the product topology which makes the smallest topology which makes uh, pi i continuous we know the continuity of the pi i continue pi i all the projection are continuous we know this is a theorem and uh, the smallest topology on x which makes each pi i continuous see say this see that uh, we underline that the phrase the product topology on x which makes each pi i continuous the smallest topology on x which makes each pi i continuous in other words it is the weak topology and another name for smallest topology is the weak topology determine the family of projection functions that is <coughs> projection family of projection functions so see that uh, that is pi i such that i belongs to i so family because see that pi i is a function from x to x i we know pi pi 1 a function from x to x 1 pi 2 a function from x to x 2 projection x 1 x 2 x 2 etc like that so it is not a very difficult one simple one now the set product i belongs to i i is the product topology with the product topology is called a topological product we know what is how to how to obtain the topological product we know all, already that we define a topology on x we define a topology on x that topology is called a product topology and uh, the see that the basis we 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 come to the base and sub base for a product topology 
special name called standard sub base and standard base uh, so let me uh, define the standard sub base let to be the topology product topology on the space product i belongs to x i where the set or the family or the collection set x i to y such that i belongs to i is an indexed collection of topological spaces then the family of four subsets of the form pi a inverse vi for vi belongs to tau i is a sub base for tau it is called the standard sub base so see that uh, pi a we know pi a from x to x i let me concentrate the projection pi a so function from x to x i so this is x and this is x i so we know pi a then take an open set in x i that is vi vi is an open set this inverse image that is pi a inverse vi pi a inverse vi see this pi a inverse vi is open in x pi a inverse definitely open in x because pi a is continuous pi a inverse vi is open in x reason is pi a is continuous so that is the reason now see that uh, we we collect all pi a inverse vi so you will get a collection that is pi i inverse vi such that vi is subset of x i or vi belongs to tau i tau i we know what is tau i tau i is a topology on v on x i so this collection this collection of open subsets of x form a sub base see see this collection form a sub base sub base for to sub base for the topology on x to is the topology on x sub base for to this collection of sets that is why inverse vi say sub base and this sub base is called the standard sub base see the key point take an open set in x i v i and its inverse image that is by a inverse v i find all the all the open sets by a inverse v i see the collection set of all by a inverse v i such that v a belongs to tau i this is a sub base for tau and this sub base is called a standard sub base also the family of four large boxes we know what is large box already you know all of whose sides are open in the respective spaces is a base for to that is how to define the base standard base the family of four large boxes large boxes we know what is box all of whose sides are open the family of four boxes whose sides are open are called is called a base that family is called a base for to so we know what is how to define this large box is not uh, time consuming and we already know all this now then the next we come to some properties that is the productive property countably productive property like that so there is a difference between that what is productive property a topological property is said to be productive productive property if whenever the collection x i to i such that i belongs to i is an indexed family of spaces having that property the topology product product x i also has it see that uh, the topology product the productive property productive and countably productive property so first we come to productive property so here also we have this some spaces x i to i such that i belongs to i and index the family of spaces and x the product space x product i belongs to i x i <coughs> now we just take a, an example of a productive property before defining that say for example t no t not t1 t2 regular etc are are productive properties we already have some theorems relating to that and also complete regularity is a productive property again Tickle property is a productive property. Connectedness is a productive property. What is the meaning of that? So, say for example, this suppose that these spaces, x i's are all connected. 
then the product is again connected. Then suppose that these spaces are T0 or T1, T2, T3 or T4, regular, like that, T0, T1 or T2 or regular or normal, then their products are, their product space is again same. But remember that normal, we, 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 we cannot say that the space is, the, the product space is normal. So in the case T0, T1, T2 or regular, T0, T1, T2 or regular, we say that the product space is T0, T2, T2 or regular. So that are called productive property. Now again, complete regularity is a productive property. So remember what are the productive properties? 1, T0, T2, T1, T2, regular and the complete regularity, ticking off property, connectedness. These are the some productive properties. Connectedness also productive property. Again, now next is a countably productive property. A property is said to be countably productive if the condition holds for all countable index set i. Suppose the only difference is that in the case of productive property, phi is i, the index set i is countable set. You know what is countable set? If it is countable, we say that the property is countably productive. Then another one more is that is not very important one finitely productive property phi is finite. The index at i is finite, we say that it is finitely productive properties. So remember that examples for productive properties T0, T1, T2, regular <coughs> called theorem. We have a theorem uh, saying that a topological product is T0, T1, T2 or regular if and only if each coordinate spaces has the corresponding property. Now, complete regularity is a productive property. Again, a theorem that is a product of topological space is completely regular if and only if each coordinate space is so. Each coordinate space is so. Now, again, Tikhno property, a topological product is Tikhno if and only if each coordinate space is so. Now, one more question for you. Is the normal space is productive? Remember, is the normal space is productive? You think about that. Is the normal space is, is a normal space is productive or not? Now again, connectedness. The product of spaces is connected if and only if each coordinate space is so. So again, connectedness is a productive property. Now next we come to the evaluation function. We know the definition for evaluation function. Here also we are taking, we are taking a, a, an indexed family of spaces yi's, set to yi such that i belongs to y, we are an indexed family of sets and x be another set. Then we take a function or each function f5 from x to yi be a function. Then the function e from x to product yi defined by ex of i is equal to f i of x is called the evaluation function is evaluation function of the index the family of functions f i. So we e is the evaluation function. E is the evaluation function. I think you already have this definition evaluation function. There is no need of any explanation. So very simple one. Next we come to distinguishes points. <coughs> there are two types of distinguishing. There is one it distinguishes points and the distinguishes points from close to sets. First we think about <coughs> what is distinguishes points. <coughs> An index to family set of all f i such that i belongs to i of functions all defined on the same domain x is set to distinguish points if for any distinct distinct points x y in x there exists j belongs to i such that f j of x not equal to f j of y. <coughs> Distinguishes points. See the, see we have S family of functions F i, indexed family of functions F i from, and uh, this. See that uh, we have to take uh, two points x and y. Now see the codomain y. 
this is see that fj is the function fj of x and fj of y fj of x not equal to fj of y they are distinct See, f i is a function from x to y, x to y. f i is a function from x to y. See that. That means f1 is a function from x to y, f2 a function from x to y, f3 a function from x to y. Now, if we can find at least one function f j, if we can find at least one function f j such that f j of x not equal to f j of y, we say that the family distinguishes points. If we can find at least one function, we have a lot of functions, f i, f1, f2, f3, like that. If we can find at least one function, f j, such that f j of x not equal to f j of y, we say that the family distinguishes points. That is the definition for distinguishes points. And uh, the second concept that is distinguishes points from closed sets. Distinguishes points from closed sets. An industrial family of functions set fi such that such from x to y such that i belongs to y, where x and yi are topological spaces is set to distinguish points from closed sets in x. If for any x belongs to x, and for any closed subset C of x not containing x. There exists j belongs to y such that here also a, a j, j belongs to y such that fj of x does not belong to fj of c bar in yj. fj of x does not belong to fj of c bar in yj. See that uh, we have here also we have a function f i from x to y i such that i belongs to y where x and y i are topological spaces and uh, the condition is that see that a point x and a close to set to c not containing x this is the space x <coughs> then suppose this is y j <coughs> and uh, this is fj of x and uh, this is fj of c <coughs> bar that is closure of fj of c so let us this is a set and this is a point here also if there exists a function fj such that fj of x not belongs to fj of c bar fj of x does not belong to fj of c bar. We say that <coughs> the family set f i distinguishes points from closed to sets. Distinguishes points from closed to sets. See the difference between distinguishes points and distinguishes points from closed to sets. <coughs> that is the concept of the distinguishes points. <coughs> now we come to the Combiteness, we know different combiteness, not even be a combined space, we know the definition, combined subset, combined space, etc. is very simple one. But what is mean by countably combined space, a topological space is said to be countably combined. If every countable open cover of it has a finite subcover, it's countably combined space. What is a combined space then? If every open cover has a finite subcover, we say that the space is uh, co combined space. Now countable space. If every countable open cover of it has a finite subcover. See that. Countably combined space. See what is in by inlaw space. In inlaw space, every open cover has a countable subcover. See that. The difference between the countably combined space and inlaw space. Much difference. Countably combined space and uh, and uh, Linlow space. Countably combined means every countable open cover has a finite subcover. 
But in low space, see the difference. We know the definition. What the definition of this? A low space means every open cover has a countable subcover. See the difference between this. Now we come to another it's an important one that is sequentially combat space. A sequence a space is said to be sequentially combat if every sequence in it has a convergence of sequence. This condition, every sequence has a convergence, you know, what is a convergence of sequence, convergence sequence, what do you mean by sequence like this? Every sequence in it, in the space, has a convergence of subsequence, this is called a sequential combat. We have a lot of properties uh, con uh, 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 about this, that is countably combat and uh, sequentially combat space. So, there are a lot of theorems also. They are a very important one. Now, we come to the direct set and the net. You know what is direct set? The last topic in this class, that is direct set. A directed set is a pair D and the relation where D is a non-empty set and the relation, a binary relation on D satisfying three conditions. Yeah, I think we already have the definition. Just read for all M, N. P belongs to D, M is related to N and N is related to P. Implies M is related to P. Second condition, for all N belongs to D, N is related to N. And for all M, N belongs to D, there exists P belongs to D such that P is related to M and P is related to N. Then the relation, we are denoting this relation. Relation. Using this symbol, this is the relation and this relation is called a binary relation here and this relation directs the set D. So this set D with this relation is called a director set. So that is the uh, key point of the definition of direct set and we know what is net, uh, net is a set. Net in a set is a function S from D to X, where D is a director set. A net in a set is S from D to X, where D is a director set. And D and X is a set or a topological space. And we define a net like this. A function from a directed set to the so what is net? It's a very simple one. A function from a directed set to uh, set to a set X is called a net. So let us conclude our class. Thank you very much.